can post-infectious IBS be cured? My name is Dr. Taranella, and in this video, we're gonna look at some of the strategies and tactics that I use to help people get from having post-infectious IBS to that 80 to 90% better mark. Only about 50% of people with post-infectious IBS actually recover. What we're gonna look at is some of the strategies that I've used to help people actually get better quicker and get to that 90 to 100%. So if this type of information is of interest to you and you wanna see more videos like this, click on the like button and subscribe to the channel to get more videos like it. All right, let's look at post-infectious IBS. Can post-infectious IBS be cured? Yes, it can. Uh, in a previous video, I discussed what is post-infectious IBS, and naturally, I got a lot of interest in, you know, what do you do about post-infectious IBS? Can it be cured? Things like this. So this video will address more specifically, can post-infectious IBS be cured? And what are some steps you can take to get to that level where you feel like things are 90%, 80% better, 100% better? So I want to let you know right off the bat that yes, it can be cured. I've helped many patients with IBS or what we determined was post-infectious IBS get completely cured, no longer have symptoms anymore, uh, or at least to a point where they are worrying about it on a, on a regular basis. First, quick summary on what is post-infectious IBS. So this is a digestive condition resulting from your intestines getting inoculated with some intestinal bug. So this could be a bacteria, could be a fungus, could be a virus, could be a parasite. Any of those can do this. And this results in IBS-like symptoms. So you could be having diarrhea, loose stools, constipation, alternating both, cramping, bloating, etc. Usually it's going to come on after eating out or some scenario where you ate some bad leftover food or something like that. So the persistence of the symptoms after that event, whatever it was, sometimes you don't even remember the specific event, but the persistence of your symptoms over, you know, weeks and months is what leads us to believe that it's post-infectious IBS. Now not all be all IBS is post-infectious, but a lot of cases are from this post-infectious scenario. The persistence of those symptoms is resulting from one of three causes. The excess microbes that may still be present even months, weeks, uh, years later, general GI inflammation, or just an imbalance in the normal relative balance of the different microbes that are present in your digestive tract. So what do you do about it? Studies indicate that somewhere around 50% of all post-infectious IBS will recover and not need any specific treatment at all. So I want to mention that too before we get too far into, you know, do X, Y, and Z. The time it takes for one person to heal versus another can vary from weeks to months. Uh, and some people don't even have this. 50% do recover without anything. Those with anxiety and depression and mood disorders seem to experience more problems, more challenges recovering, getting to that 80, 90% recovery rate. So we wanna look at how do we shorten the time it takes to recover and increase the chance that you actually recover fully and not have to deal with this. In order to do this, we need to understand what the actual problem is going on. Which of those three issues, is it uh, dysbiosis or an imbalance? Is it excess microbes? Or is it just this persistent inflammation from the infection that was there before? Now, that being said, you don't always have to know the specific thing that's going on in order to make some general strategies or help support uh, some of the things going on in the digestive tract. So there is a test to identify if you have post-infectious IBS. So if you're unsure, if you have you know sy symptoms that have been there for a long time and you can't pinpoint it to a specific event, this may be worthwhile checking if you know, and it may be worthwhile doing it, even if you do have that association. The test is called IBS SMART, and it's measuring different antibodies to your intestinal tract that get upregulated or get triggered by your immune system when you have post-infectious IBS. These are called uh, anti-vincelin and anti-CDTB. So, and that's called IBS SMART. So you can check that out if you're unsure. But generally speaking, you know, in order to shorten the time span for you from your current digestive issues, to getting better from post-infectious IBS, we do want to kind of know the general lay of the land of what's going on. And so we said there's different bugs that one can get, bacteria, virus, fungus, parasites, etc. So which one do you have? Well, we'll know by testing. And in the U.S., it's more common to get viruses or bacteria than it is any of the others. But those can occur too. And, you know, if you're in an area of the world where potentially you're exposed to a parasite, it might be worthwhile doing some parasite tests. We're going to focus more on the bacterial side since that's more common 
that's what I've seen more, at least in my practice. So the two things that we're going to be looking at for this is pathogenic bacteria, like different clostridial species, Klebsiella, things like that, and overgrowth syndromes, so where there's excess bacteria. When there is pathogenic bacteria, there basically can be anywhere in the, in the intestines, but usually they're going to be in the colon. There's no way to really test to differentiate this unless you're doing like a biopsy and then checking for those microbes on a microscope or some kind of culture. And mostly how we do this is through stool testing and different metabolomic testing. And for pathogenic bacteria, what you're going to typically see is they're going to live more so in the colon. And the pathogenic bacteria are more commonly associated with being in the colon, even though they could potentially be in the small intestine. And like I said, there's really no great way to differentiate the two. Whereas the overgrowth syndromes are going to be more in the small intestine. And these are typically the friendly bacteria. They've just gotten in the wrong spot. And so they've kind of created a mess and a lot of fermentation that causes a lot of the symptoms when they're in the small intestine. When there's excess bacteria in the small intestine or imbalance or excess pathogenic bacteria in the large intestine, it can be difficult to isolate this in through testing. And the test, tests can be expensive as well. But in the end, if you're not really getting better, it is important to utilize one of these tests so you can clearly see what's going on. Some tests would include a stool test looking for different uh, culture and sensitivity for different bacterial strains and also using the PCR amplification to identify different bacteria. And there's also oat testing, which looks at metabolites of different microbes that can help us understand what's going on with fungal things or clostridial species and other harmful bacteria. And then there's also obviously stool testing, we said, and then there's obviously the SIBO test itself. But there, you know, there can be problems that basically can't be detected with testing. And so that's where clinical experience and having a doctor that knows and understands GI problems to kind of guide you through that process uh, to getting to that 80, 90% full recovery. In the case that you think you have possibly cleared the microbial issue, then mostly we'll be looking at helping your body uh, reduce the overall inflammation that's occurring. So for these types of issues, you can basically would be doing a trial of some supportive nutrients, supportive herbs, probiotics, and things like that that will help the body recover faster. So these would be things like glutamine and slippery elm, and there's usually like formulas for like leaky gut, for instance, these are all going to help with the overall recovery process. If you still have the bacteria or, or micro present in the intestines, it's going to be difficult for you to fully recover, even if you're adding in these other things, you know, that are going to help cure leaky gut, like probiotics and things like that. In some cases, things may get worse, especially if there's prebiotics and the probiotic and things like that can actually make things worse when you still have these bacterial problems present. So the leaky gut cures can be really great and helpful. It's just that there, there's a time and a place to use them. And if you still have bacteria or excess microbes in your intestine, they're probably not going to help a lot. And in some cases will make things worse. So because of that, you know, testing is oftentimes needed to understand what's going on. Digestive issues in general can be ambiguous, so you should always consult your doctor when you're trying to understand, get a better understanding of what's going on and how to get yourself to that, you know, 80 to 100% better where you don't have to worry about digestive symptoms so often. They'll help you make sure you're keeping the full picture uh, in view as you're kind of working through these issues. So post-infectious IBS can be cured. I've helped many patients do it. Sometimes you need more testing. Sometimes it just helps to use some supportive nutrients like the glutamine and general leaky gut cures, probiotics, and things like that. If you're interested in some of the things that I use, look in the description. I'll put a link to some of those products. All right, that's all I had for this topic, Can IBS Be Cured? If you do have questions about any of the content in this video, please drop it in the comment section. I may do a separate video on that if I think there's enough interest in it. Thank you again for watching. We'll see you next time.